Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2020-21 season. My name is Dan and today we're doing a buy, sell, keep, avoid video for game week 18. Now it's going to be a little bit different today because we've got to take into consideration some of you guys are going to be on free hits, some of you guys are not going to be on free hits. Don't worry, I'll explain that in just one second. But before we get started, I just want to say if you do enjoy this series, I mean, I enjoy this series, please do give it a big thumbs up, show your support to the channel. And of course, if you're new around here, do consider subscribing. But just before we tell you about the rules, a quick word from our sponsor today. And our sponsor today is, of course... Um, uh, yeah, classic One Football. One Football's back on this, this channel as a sponsor. We had a little break over Christmas, but they are back on the channel indeed. And if you don't know what One Football is, it's a great app slash website for all things football. Now, I personally use One Football, the mobile app, to check. Premier League scores, Premier League stats, you know, whether I'm sometimes not watching the game, I'll check what happened in that game, look back at some stats like that. It's also a great source for football news and transfer rumours, January transfer window right now, so interesting to see what's going on with Mesut Ozil, for example, as an Arsenal fan. So yeah, loads of stuff there, so if you'd like to keep up to date with your football stuff, do check out the link in the top of my description, of course, completely free. So very quickly, players who are buys are players you probably don't have, but you should consider bringing in. Players who are sells are players you probably have, but you should consider removing. Players who are keeps are players that you probably have and should keep. And players who are avoids are players you probably don't have, but you should avoid them as well. Maybe you're thinking about getting them in, avoid them. Now, for this video, because some of you guys are on free hits, what I'm going to do for each category, buy, sell, keep and avoid, I'm going to do one player for those of you who are, who are on your free hits and one player for those of you who are not on your free hits. Now, I know, guys, if you're not on a free hit this game week, you might have found that I've kind of neglected you a little bit. I've not been talking too much about what to do if you're not on a free hit. So hopefully this video is actually going to really help you guys out who aren't free hitting um, and equally Hopefully some nice little tidbits in here for those of you who are free hitting as well. So loads of stuff to cover. Let's crack into it and start off with our first buy. And this buy is for a free hit player in game week 18. So first off, Bukayo Saka, if you're free hitting, this is a player you want to buy. Bukayo Saka is looking very, very nice at the moment. Honestly, he is Probably the best option to go for at Arsenal. We've seen that Arsenal are scoring a lot of goals. We've seen that they've kind of taken off a real, real new lease of form and right at the right moment as well because they're about to play Crystal Palace, who are one of the weakest teams in the league right now. They're conceding loads of goals to all kinds of opposition. So they really are a team we kind of want to be targeting. And who's the best attacking player at Arsenal to go for? Well, I think it's Bukayo Saka. So out of all players in Arsenal, he has taken more shots than anyone else. You can think of a Bamiang, Lacazette, whoever you might think is taking the most shots. You're wrong because it's Bukayo Osaka. 13 shots, nine of those in the box as well. And um, he's scored, scored two goals in the period of the last five games. He's also looking really good creatively um, at two assists, which is really nice. Obviously, you can tell that he is the dry, one of the driving creative forces and um, now in that Arsenal side. Now, T Kieran Tierney is actually creating slightly more chances than Bukayo Osaka, but Saka is creating the better quality chances. So he's looking really good for assists as well. He's no longer playing in this left wing back position that we typically think of him playing in he's a right winger now playing really far up the pitch looking really really good in the best form since he started playing for Arsenal and even when he started playing for Arsenal he looked amazing now he's sort of really reaching starting to reach his potential which is really really nice to see and um, particularly for me as an Arsenal fan so he's super cheap he has got one of the best outputs at Arsenal certainly the best attacking output He's definitely worth a go for this price in your free hit team, enabling you to use more of your money on more premium assets. When you've got Saka in at 5.3 million, you can afford to spend the rest of your money on some bigger hitting players. You really cannot go wrong here. 5.3 million, guaranteed starter, go for him. Bukio Saka for the free hitters. Our next buy is Cancelo, and this is for the non-free hitters. I'm not saying that if you are a free hitter, you can't go for Salah, uh, for, for Salah, for Cancelo. I probably would go for Cancelo, to be honest, if I was on a free hit as well. But if you are not on a free hit, Cancelo is one of the players who you want to be targeting at this game week. Um, definitely. You sort of Man City in general and perhaps Manchester United are the two teams we really want to be looking at now. We've got Cancelo here. He has got an insane um, um, output. He is creating so many chances. He is taking shots. He's pretty much playing in midfield most of the matches. There seems to be some kind of conspiracy at Manchester City where... They're not finishing off the chances that Cancelo creates, but finishing off the chances that other players create. Eventually, Cancelo is going to be 
getting a couple of assists in a game, maybe a goal in a game, and he is a big score waiting to happen. So he is a player, not only do you want for this game week, where not many teams play, Manchester City, one of the few teams that play, but also a play that you want to look at long term. Now, the advantage of this is that Manchester City also, I've, I've spoken about this to no end before, guys, are by far the best defence in the Premier League right now. And that hasn't so, shown no sl signs of showing, slowing down. They look really good defensively. So we're looking at clean sheets here from Cancelo. We're looking at potential assists because he is, his creative output is pretty much one of the best out of any defenders in the league and he's taking shots he's playing far up the pitch he's everything we like and also he's pretty nailed on as well we know uh carl walker has got coronavirus at the moment i'm not sure when he's going to potentially be back but even when carl walker's fit and um, mendy is fit all of the fullbacks are fit Cancelo seems to be the most important player in this man city defense he's playing 90 minutes every single game he really is that important so you've got a nailed on player there so Really, really good player to pick up this game week. If you're not on a free hit, you've got a player to play in this game week. You've got a player to play in next game week. You've got yourself covered. Go for some Man City players, but if you're going for Man City defence, definitely Cancelo is a guy that you want to be looking at. So, free hitters. Who have we got here? Harry Kane and Hyunmin Son as a sell. It might surprise you, but yes, Harry Kane and Hyunmin Son, I'm sure that you would have had these players in your team before you free hitted. And you're probably also thinking... Maybe I should keep them in my team as well. Now, I'm not completely sure about this one, to be honest. I understand completely, fair enough, have one of them. But if you're one of those people, and a lot of people, probably most people watching this video right now, will have both Harry Kane and Hyun Min Son. You've hit the free hit button, and you've just decided to keep both of them in your team. Don't think you should do that. Don't think you need to do that. I think you could do better than to not have both of those. And the reason mostly for that is that Aston Villa are a really, really difficult defence to play against right now. We've seen recently that Spurs kind of have... They've not got the same attacking output. Now, fair enough, they got a few goals against Leeds, but we've got to remember that's Leeds, the single worst defence in the entire league. Now, they're coming up against Aston Villa in this, in this game week 18. It's going to be really tough for them to, to score some goals. Now, I don't doubt that they can score... Maybe one goal, maybe two. A two would be a little bit of a push, but it could easily be zero goals, goals or one goal for Spurs in this game. I really wouldn't have that much confidence in them to go out there and score a load of points. And when we're on a free hit, we've got an opportunity to absolutely really attack this feature, completely go for it, and... Um, you know, absolutely crack on and pick some players who we think are going to do really, really, really well, rather than picking players that we think... Oh, okay, yeah, they've been pretty reliable. Maybe we should just stick with who's been reliable. Why not? It's a free hit. We can go a little bit crazy. As long as we're taking calculated risks, we can go a little bit crazy. And I don't think it's that crazy to just pick one of Son and Kane. I really don't think you need both. And I think, you know, for a similar price, players like Rashford, Bruno, KDB, Sterling... You would expect all of the, uh, maybe even Aguero, you expect all five of those guys and their similar price players to outscore both Son and Kane. So why would you want both Son and Kane when you can start getting some of these other players in? Now, I'm not saying take out both, don't take out both, but maybe only keep one in your team, but sell the other for your free hit team. One week only, no big deal. Get rid of them, just whip them out your team and then... Um, yeah, pick another premium asset that perhaps has a little bit, slightly better uh, fixture there. Timo Werner is our sell for non-free hitters. Now, the first reason why Timo Werner would be a sell for your non-free hitters is because in game week 18, Timo Werner doesn't play. So that's pretty easy. That's a pretty easy reason to take him out. But we know that pretty much every player who doesn't play in this game week also plays twice next game week. So actually, in the majority of cases, it's not really much sense moving to a player who plays once in each game when we could just have a one that plays in two games and zero games in the other that's kind of that's kind of the logic there either way you're getting a player playing in two games so if you're not on a free hit you kind of stuck in a situation where you're going to have players that either play zero games in one game we can two in the other or one and one either way you've got players that are playing in two games other than of course our manchester city and our manchester united players which you probably do want to be targeting if you're not on a free hit. But the thing is with Timo Werner, even though he doesn't play this game week, next game week, he plays two games that I am not so keen on anyway. He's not really a player I'd want to have in, in, in that double. I think there's better options to have next game week anyway. So maybe you could make a switch here to someone like um, Martial, for example, who plays once in this game week and twice in next game week. You've got three games total 
and he's a player that looks slightly better as well in terms of what he will kind of be outputting. But yeah, I would recommend taking out Werner. We know he's not scoring goals at the moment. No goals in his past, I mean, at least five games. Um, I've written down the past five game statistics, but perhaps I should have actually looked a little bit further back to see how long he's been without a goal. But it has been a while and just one assist during the past five games as well. He's only had two shots on target in five games. And... We did see him get drops um, during the last five game period as well and, and you know used as a substitute instead. So how long is his stint in the team going to stay? You kind of got to think that perhaps he's actually going to be moved out of the team at some point or another by Frank Lampard. You, you know, how much patience do you have in him? I'm not sure, but he's certainly not a player you want this game week because he doesn't play. And next game week, I think there are better options anyway. So therefore, he is one of the players where I'd be more comfortable with selling right now if I wasn't on a free hit. So free hitters, our next keep is Emi Martinez. Emi Martinez is a keep if you're a free hitter. This is a bit of an interesting one. And I kind of had to think outside the box a little bit, which is ironic because I've got a, a, a top on that says think and then it's outside of a, a box. Never mind. Uh, so basically, this is kind of an interesting one. The reason why I've put him here is because... A lot of us guys do have Emi Martinez in our normal team. So when we're building our free hit teams, you know, automatically he is there and then you can consider removing him from your team. But if you haven't removed him from your team and he is just st stayed in there, then I don't think that's such a bad thing. Now, this game week 18 is a little bit dodgy. I know it's a free hit week or a lot of us guys are on free hits. If you are, still a little bit dodgy. There's still going to be some banana skins about and there's still potential for games to be called off. So therefore, you probably want to have two playing goalkeepers in your free hit team. Now, the best playing goalkeepers that you want to play, sort of, we're looking at Darlo, Leno, maybe, potentially Loris, maybe. All of these keepers are around 5 million or more. Now, if you bought Emi Martinez at the right time, he's actually a 4.5 million goalkeeper. So, kind of as a backup... He's actually pretty cheap, um, considering like if you bought him at sort of 4.5, 4.6, then you can only really sell him right now for 4.7, 4.8. So actually, you're saving a little bit of money. The other backup goalkeepers that you might want to look at this game week are probably a minimum of 5 million. So you're saving money and having a playing goalkeeper as long as you don't sell Emi Martinez. As long as you keep just keep him in your team, his selling price is lower um, than 5 million anyway. So it's not like you can do a like-for-like -like switch there. To keep him there on your on your bench and use him as your backup goalkeeper because technically because you bought him cheap he is a cheap backup goalkeeper and I know he plays Spurs but I don't think that's the worst thing in the world like I said Aston Villa have been pretty good defensively recently like really good defensively recently so there's no issue in keeping him in him in your team I think it could actually work out not too bad as particularly as a backup goalkeeper I wouldn't be starting him they wouldn't be starting him but as a backup goalkeeper I think Martinez is a pretty solid option particularly if you already have him and you have him at that cheaper price so that is basically what i'm recommending to you guys three clean sheets in this past five games you know he's making saves plenty of save points all about he just looks good at the moment doesn't he so keep him as your backup goalkeeper why not why not so you keep non-free hitters is uh dominic calvert lewin non-free hitters you're probably it was a surprise there that i would tell you to keep dominic calvert lewin or maybe you're not i'm not sure but the fact is that a lot of people are selling calvert lewin so many people hundreds of thousands of people are selling calvert lewin this game week and the reason why i'm going to try and argue against this is because you're selling a player that actually plays in game week 18 now if you're not free hitting this game week there's a very good chance that you probably only have seven eight maybe nine the top 10 players who are actually going to even have a game week at this in game week 18. So if one of those players is Dominic Cavalier, it's pretty precious to you, right? You want to be keeping hold. And, and, you know, these players who are actually playing in this game week, they're your best asset right now in game week 18, aren't they? So now it's not, you might want to sell them long term. And I completely understand that. Maybe you want to ship out Dominic Calvert Lewin next game week. Com completely understand that. Completely understand that. But for this game week, You've just got to keep him in. He's one of the few players that you have who actually has a game this game week. You want to treasure that a little bit more. I get that his output hasn't been amazing right now, but he has had three big chances in the past five games. 1.49 expected goals. He's got. He's not actually had any goals, uh, unfortunately, but he is looking like he, there are possibilities. Now, I know that Everton are looking a little bit toothless right now. They're not scoring as many goals, but 
There is still potential, I think, for Calvert-Lewin to get goals slash assists as he always does at some point or another. It's not like he's never getting points again. I wouldn't want him in my team long term necessarily, but in this game week where the players who are playing are such precious commodities, Calvert-Lewin is the kind of player that you've got to keep, I think. And instead, make a transfer of a player who isn't playing this game week and their double game week doesn't look so good or their long-term fixtures don't look so good and, and, and start bringing in some Man City and Manchester United players. That's kind of what I'd be saying. But for this game week alone, keep Calvert-Lewin. If you want to save your transfer and do a double change next game week or something like that, I think that would be more sensible. Um, you could take out Calvert-Lewin and replace him with double game week player next game week. That works. But for this game week, hold on to him. Hold on to him. Finally, some avoids, and we'll start off with Aaron Wambasaka for those of you guys who are on free hits. And he's actually, Wambasaka is kind of one of the most popular players that people are putting in their free hit team. And I kind of understand why. He's the most, he's the highest scoring uh, defender at Manchester United this season. And Manchester United, they've got Burnley in game week 18. We probably do want to take a one week punt on a Manchester United defender. Completely get that. I'm, I'm up for taking the one week punt on a Manchester United defender. Don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to do. However, you kind of got to pick the right one. And I don't. I feel like Maguire, uh, no, uh, Wambasaka is not the right one. I would be looking more at Maguire, um, you know, Luke Shaw, maybe uh, Eric Bailly. The problem is that I, although Wambasaka has had the most points this season, his expected points is far, far lower. So he's got a, kind of a luck, one, like one lucky assist, one, well, I don't want to say lucky, but... You know, one lucky assist, one uh, uh, lucky goal this season that's kind of boosted his stats a little bit, even though he's not a particularly creative player. In fact, he's not a creative player at all. He creates one minor chance every other game. He's not uh, He's not shooting a lot. He's taken two shots all season. So it's, it's strange that he has got a goal and an assist because... Quite frankly, he's not really earned that through his expected goals and expected assists, the amount of passes that he's made, the amount of shots he's taken. It doesn't, it doesn't happen very often, and perhaps he's been a bit fortunate to get the points that he has done so far. So, instead, we kind of want to divert our attention to players who perhaps are a bit more worthy of their points, players who are kind of, you know, actually... Taking, you know, taking a lot of shots, creating a lot of chances. And there are players that uh, look a lot better on, on kind of all fronts. Um, Harry Maguire, for example, this season, Wambasaka, two shots. Harry Maguire, 21 shots. So I know all of these are going to be from corners and maybe free kicks as well, but it doesn't matter really where it comes from. The fact is that Maguire has taken 10 times more shots than Wambasaka this season. Um, we can look at Luke Shaw, 20 key passes and three big chances created in far, far less minutes than Wambasaka there, who's only made seven uh, key passes all season. It's really not very good. Tellez, in just six games, compared to Wambasaka's uh, 14 games, eight key passes. So Wambasaka is really a really low output player. Yes, maybe he'll be good for the clean sheet, but after that, he's not really going to get you any points. And to expect it to happen, and perhaps, you know, I know obviously you got the assist last game week, and perhaps that's made people think, oh, he's, he's a guy who gets points. It really is a one-off. I really wouldn't be betting on this. I know a lot of people think as sort of fullbacks, wingbacks, whatever you want to call them, that they more actually have a more attacking threat than the centre backs. This is not the case in with Van Bissaka. It never really has been, to be honest. He's always kind of been, you know, he's never been known for his attacking ability. He's always been a solid defensive fullback. So. Yeah, I really would not be putting my money in Wambasaka, to be honest. Where we're on a free hit, we can get a bit creative. Why not go for a player who, you know, statistically, underlying stats looks a lot better. And this is kind of how we get the edge over other people. Because the general populace of FPL, they're not looking at the underlying stats. They're looking at how many points has this player got, full stop. We can look and be clever and try and predict what's going to happen next. And the predictions say that Wambasaka is not exactly on for too many more points, to be honest. And our final avoid, and this is for non-free hitters, so if you're not on a free hit, well, I mean, you've already seen it on the screen because it is Tomas Suchek. And, um, yeah, you're probably going to get your pitchforks out for this one, aren't you? But don't. Don't get your pitchforks out. Hear me out, guys. Suchek doesn't play in game week 18, so why buy him in game week 18? It doesn't make any sense to buy a player who is not playing this game week. Just save your transfer and take two transfers into next game week or use your transfer somewhere else. You guys are probably struggling to field a full 11 right. If you're not on a free hit, you're struggling to field a, a full 11 players this game week. And yet you want to waste your transfer on a player 
who isn't even playing this game week. Maybe you're even taking out a player who is playing this game week and replacing him with someone who isn't in Soshek. Soshek is the fourth most popular transfer in this game week. Why? Why? It, does, it makes no sense whatsoever. So I really want to warn you guys, don't transfer him in this game week. Now, I'm not saying this because he's bad. You guys can look at one of my, I think one of my first ever videos on this channel around a year ago, maybe just under a year ago. Um, I was, it was perhaps my third video I ever made was my favourite January transfers of 2020. And one of those players was Thomas Suchek. I was sort of looking at his stats from when he was playing in the Czech Republic and his stats in the Champions League. And we had this amazing, cheap, seemingly centre defensive midfielder who was scoring goals. And I was really impressed by kind of what I saw in, in my research back there. So I've been hyping him up for ages. He was in my team pretty much the whole end or tail end of last season. He was in so many of my videos pre-season as someone you should get. So please don't label me as an associate hater. I'm absolutely not. I love him. I think he's fantastic. But he, he's not playing a game this game week. So it makes no sense to buy him. The way the free hit works, even if you're you're bringing him in and then you're free hitting, it's just going to cancel out the transfer anyway. So that doesn't work. Really don't understand why why anyone would would bring in Thomas Suchek this this game week. Just take just do it next game week if you really want him that badly. It makes so much more sense to me there. There you go, guys. Anyway, so a quick summary, guys. And I'm not going to go player to player, but basically the summary is that if you are on a free hit right now, you can get a little bit creative. You can take some risks but make sure they're calculated risks. So the calculated risks you can take sort of, you know, go for a Manchester United defender. Ordinarily, we wouldn't want a Manchester United defender in our team, but for one week only, yes, let's do it, but make sure you pick the right one. Go for an Arsenal attacking player. Yes, let's do it, but make sure you pick the right one. Don't waste all your money on a Bamiyang when Saka actually has the better output, for example. So be smart about it. And those of you guys who are not on a free hit, you basically want to focus all of your attention on Manchester United and Manchester City players, particularly those who looked the most nailed on because these are the guys who are playing both in this game week and in next game week as a double. So you cover yourself for this game week and you still get the benefits of double game weeks next game week like us free hitters as well. So you kind of got the best of both worlds in many ways with those Manchester United and Manchester City players. There will be a little bit of rotation but generally speaking yeah I think I think you can still make something of this so don't worry too much about it. But that is the end of the video today, guys. Um, please do like this video if you found it useful at all. If you're new around here, please do consider subscribing. Hopefully, hopefully this was, this was kind of a little bit for everyone. I really hope you did enjoy it. But let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, maybe you've got a few questions. I'll try and answer them to my the best of my ability, I guess. Plenty more content to come in this game week. Obviously, we've got we've got loads of loads of time before the next game week kind of starts. So we can still actually carry on cracking on making quite a few interesting videos. And if you do have any particular topics you want me to talk about, let me know in the comments as well. But aside from that, check out OneFootball, check out my Twitter, Instagram, join my mini league or support me on Patreon, all in the description down below. And aside from that, I will see you tomorrow for my team selection video and I'll be showing you my personal free hit team. Excited to show you guys and I'll see you tomorrow on that one. See you later, mates. Bye-bye.